Hey guys, Chef Anita here. Just going to give you a quick update on what I'm doing at home for dinner at home. Um, as you already know from yesterday's video, I am doing some recipe trials for a um, tasting that I have to do uh, next week. So in doing so, um, a big part of this tasting is me utilizing dark spirits, uh, such as bourbon, whiskey, rum, things like that. So today I decided to go on ahead and trial one of the other things that I'm planning on featuring for this tasting, which will absolutely have some beautiful Bacardi, Bacardi rum. This is a part of my childhood. Um, why? Because my father loved it, my uncles, and having grown up in Puerto Rico as well. So uh, when I opened my restaurant, I knew that I would do a lot of different things with Bacardi rum, which actually, as a rum, it is really, truly versatile. I can use it in different salsas. I've used it in mole. I've used it in um, a lot of different curries, actually. So today, we're going a little Asian with it. Um, I still want to keep the flavors really mild and really, really clean because I want the rum to be featured in what I'm doing. Uh, much like yesterday when I used the bourbon in that barbecue glaze or the glaze that I made for the pork, um, the habanero was there, um, the maple syrup was there, but the star was definitely still the bourbon. So that's what I'm trying to accomplish today as well. So with going with Asian flavors, and if of course, if you know anything about Asian flavors, it can overpower if you overuse something. So I'm going to go really nice and slow, have my base mirepoix, my aromatics, things like that already set. But I'm going to, again, just take it slow so that I don't overpower the flavor of the rum. We're definitely going to be setting this thing ablaze, just like I did yesterday. I like to cook the um, alcohol out of it as much as possible. So then you are just left with this caramel tasting liquid and it just forms the most unbelievable development of flavor. And it almost feels like your sauces has textures to it. Um, so tonight with the Bacardi, uh, my base ingredients are gonna be a green onion. I'm gonna use the whites of the onion in the sauce keeping the green as a garnish and then i'll also be doing a little uh fresh ginger and some whole cloves of garlic i'm going to set all that ablaze with the chili of choice tonight is going to be a fresno chili which is essentially a red jalapeno but the Fresno chili is definitely a lot fruitier, not as spicy sometimes, but then there's other times where it will you know, blow your face off. So that's going to be going in there. And I also want an element of sesame. Um, I kind of want to treat this sauce like a mole. Um, and this is how I incorporate different uh, regions. I'm going to be uh, toasting some sesame seed and putting it into the sauce and then blending it all together so it'll give me that nice nutty toasty flavor but while i will be using the seed i am also going to be using a little bit of the oil the sesame seed oil and i'll be adding some rice wine vinegar as my acid and also some fresh lime so i haven't quite come up with a name for this sauce this glaze yet and what I am going to be using it on is chicken. Um, I want to see how it can make or elevate just a simple roasted chicken. At the tasting, I'll be doing something else. But again, I'm using proteins and things that will just allow me to taste what I'm doing. And then I can adjust it for this event, which I just love to do. I love to play around with flavors and chilies and things like that, as you already know. So, por que no, right? And I've got Bacardi. Hello, people. This is going to be amazing. So, with that, I'll also be adding some pure, raw honey. I managed to find this at the grocery store. And this is actually one of my favorite honeys to make sauces with. It's almost like finding a really great molasses. 
Um, this is called Wild Mountain Raw Honey. And today it was on sale. It's typically like $35 a jar. And today I was like, oh, I need this. So let's buy it. Um, I also, like I said, will be adding the rice wine vinegar. I already showed you that. And then I will be adding a little bit of soy to the whole party. And then that's going to have some ground ginger. I want ginger two ways. I want whole ginger, which then I will fish out before I blend the sauce. But I also want ground ginger. I like the different levels of flavor in this. And instead of black pepper, I will be using white pepper. I've got to buy some more. I use this a lot. Um, so I'm really excited. So this is going to be a whole roasted chicken. And I'm just going to serve it with um these are haricot vert. these are french green beans i wanted a long a chinese long bean but fortunately cannot find it around here so um i'm just gonna toss these in a little bit of olive oil and some garlic chili paste i may even make my own garlic chili paste actually but i just want to leave everything just really simple instead of trying to incorporate too much like i typically do because again this is a base for what I'm doing uh, this coming week. So um, yeah, definitely come back and see what I'm up to because tonight's flavor are definitely gonna cause um, a lot of heat, a lot of fun, and I'm definitely gonna be listening to some salsa music while I'm setting this Bacardi on fire. So no, I will not videotape myself doing that, but maybe my daughter will do it again. Anyway, uh, Dwayne's looking at me right now in such a manner. I have to go. Talk to you soon. <laughs> okay, so my chicken has been washed, dried thoroughly with uh, paper towels. And now I'm going to put this into the refrigerator, stuffed with uh, some of the aromatics um, that I want inside of the cavity. Now, typically when I do um, a whole chicken, I take the backbone out and I lay it out flat onto a rack and I roast it that way at 450 degrees. But today my family wanted something that was stuffed with different flavors and different um, savory things to make the inside of this chicken just really, really sing. So that is what we're doing today. So before I actually stuff it, I'm gonna um, salt it a little bit on the inside so then you have Again, as I always say, salting from the bottom up, even though it is going to sit in the refrigerator to air chill for some time before I actually put it into the oven. But before I actually put it into the oven, it's going to come out of the refrigerator for at least a half hour to get up to room temperature. So it's a whole process in order for you to get that really beautiful, crispy skin and make sure that um, your chicken is moist and not dry especially since i haven't brined it this is just going to be straight up and down in there and then glazed with that beautiful bacardi uh, lime soy glaze that i'll be doing in a little while so i just wanted to show you that part and it's going to be really simply done now please when you're working with chicken we all know be careful you don't want to cross contaminate Everything I have uh, for this meal is literally like really far away so that I don't accidentally uh, cross contaminate with chicken bacteria, which could be very harmful to your family. So that I just salted it. Now we're going to add a couple of pieces of lime, a couple of pieces of ginger, whole ginger right on in there and then I'm going to take some of those green onion the green tops the scallions and I'm going to put that right in there as well just like that and now I'm going to go get some cooking twine and I am actually going to um, tie this up so that it, all the legs and the wings stay all tucked in and so it cooks up really nice and uniform in my cast iron in the oven. So come back. Okay, we're going to trust this chicken.
just like that. Took no time at all. You want that chicken breast to actually be all puckered like that. It actually helps it cook really evenly, keeps everything really juicy. I love this. I can't wait to bring you back for the finished product. Okay guys, here we go. Are you ready for it? This is the fun part. This is when everything gets lit up on fire. But first, I'm taking my time with this. I want to uh, really get all of my Miracle, my aromatics, everything just kissed with a little bit of char. So of course I'm using Lapadella Porto Olive Oil because here's why. I believe in this product so much because when I am cooking something, it doesn't matter where I'm cooking it from, the olive oil never gets in the way. Grapeseed oil, amazing for that as well. But grapeseed oil is not something that I readily have in my kitchen, and whenever I do, we go through it very quickly. Um, but Lapadella still, for me, is it's my go-to. I can buy it in large bulks, large quantities through Amazon, and it's just always here for me and it's never failed me so right now I am tarring my um, scallion white bottoms and um, I have there maybe six whole garlic cloves and I'm also going to be adding my onion now this is a small onion I wanted it to be small because I already have the scallion so I don't want it to be too overpowered in the onion flavor but I need two different kinds of onion flavor there understood that okay so now I have my ginger whole ginger and again the ginger is going to get fished out and probably most of these fresno chilies are also going to get fished out before I blend everything I'm going to taste it as we go now something I do with um, jalapenos, habaneros, what have you, I always touch it to my tongue to see how spicy it is, carefully, because if you're working with something like a scotch bonnet or ghost pepper or something that's crazy, you're, again, you blow your face off. But Fresno chilies are typically supposed to be uh, milder than an actual green jalapeno, but I still touch it to my tongue to see the spice level. Um, and I don't do it with this part. I do it with the top part with the stem on it. These, I'm going to go medium high, but I want it to be spicy because that's just how we do it here. So that's going to get tossed around a little bit. In about two seconds, we're all going to start coughing. Let me get a fan on. I'm sorry about the noise. Okay, see that? All that color? That's perfect. Kicking up the heat. <laughs> and there I go, I'm coughing, because I'm standing over this. And then guys, this is my old friend, Bacardi. I mean, hello. A glass of this, with a giant ice cube, out in the backyard smoking a cigar oh yeah girls smoke cigars too it's just magical but in sauces this is really beautiful okay so let's see if this actually catches fire right away so I'm gonna stand back a little bit it did not and why? Because I use this deep pot for this very purpose. I don't want to set my kitchen on fire. So then I use, woo! There you go. Do you see this? If I want you guys to actually, if you have a chance, go look at my other video from yesterday. This flame is so different from yesterday's flame. The bourbon sauce that I made, I mean, there is a difference. We're gonna let that burn out. <coughs> I'm gonna go cough a little bit more. 
and I'll bring you back. Okay, so we're back. <clears throat> I'm gonna try to get through this without coughing too much. Now based solely on the amount of coughing my family was doing, I went ahead and removed some of the Fresno chilies. Again, because you want to have balanced flavor. You want heat, but you don't want that to be the forefront. You want it to be somewhere in the back, just kind of making everything really happy. Um, that Bacardi smell in my kitchen right now is insane. I, I can't even tell you guys, it's amazing. And again, as I started to say, look at my last video, look at how the flame is so differently colored from the bourbon. I, I just love that. So now I'm gonna go on in with that raw honey and we're definitely gonna go a little heavy handed with that. And again, I apologize because I don't cook with measurements. I just, I know the flavors that I'm trying to accomplish. I understand what I'm looking at and what I want as a finished product. And I am a firm believer, unless you're baking of course, that if you're making a sauce, just kinda do your research, figure out what you want to do, put your own spin on it. I mean, this is something that I've just been doing for years. Um, while I've been training as a chef. So now it's automatic. I, I, I'm on autopilot all the time. Oh, this looks good. Let me put this in, let me put that in. So as far as a recipe, I can definitely get you a recipe, but for me, it's just all here, there, and taste and adjust. But I always go slow at the start. That is number one, that is key, because you can't pull back a lot of that flavor if you go over, such as in salt or heat, etc. So I just put my um, honey in, and do you see how it starts to foam up and get all awesome like that? I love that. So now I want to cut that with some rice wine vinegar. And I probably should have taken that part off so I didn't have to sit here doing this for 35 seconds, but this is where we are right now. And then of course, that tamari. Now this is a soy-based sauce, but I want it to be more honey and Bacardi, so we're only gonna put in there maybe a quarter cup. There you go, boom. And if later on I feel like I need some a little bit more, then I can definitely add it. And why do I use tamari And while I'm making my sauces? I also use the other soy sauce. But when I am making an, a sauce of this nature, which I'm gonna let cook for a while, tamari is low sodium, no gluten, a little bit healthier for you, and it doesn't get that coin, minerally kind of flavor on it when you cook it for a long period of time. Now, if I really want a soy flavor, I go with regular full-blown soy. But for this, I decided tamari, because again, I want soy flavor, but I want Bacardi and honey and Fresno chili and all the spices to be the star. Soy is just a flavor enhancement, an umami, if you will. If you will. Look at that, look at how that's going. Now we're gonna kick down the heat. That is what I wanna see. I'm going to add just a skosh, if you will, maybe a skosh more, of um, sesame oil. And then I'm also going to add some dashes of white pepper. And then again, ground ginger. For me, ginger flavor is probably one of my favorites. It, it, it is. I just absolutely love it. Um, so now, oh, an important tip, I actually didn't salt anything. I typically salt as I go, but for this sauce, because it has a soy base, I didn't salt anything. I just went ahead and put the bottoms of the scallions with the garlic, the Lapadella olive oil, just a little bit to get everything on low, nice and toasty and then we built up from there. Now, as soon as I am done with all of this, adding my spices and so on and so forth, 
I am going to taste. And if it needs more salt, then we're going to add it. So now this is something that I like to keep quiet. Just a touch. Certain people here don't really like it. I love it. So I've learned to use it without them knowing. So, there we go. I'm gonna let that cook for a bit. And then I am going to add my sesame seed in there as well and then I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of chicken stock now if you want to make it a vegetarian you totally can just use vegetable stock and then I'm gonna cook all that down and blend it and then after it's been blended I'm gonna add some lime I don't want to do it right now I want to wait I want to see how this plays but that's where we are right now and I'm super excited to bring you back and show you the rest of it and oh my gosh Bacardi come on hello do a little salsa dance there you go all right I'll see you guys soon okay guys we're back with our beautiful Bacardi um, inspired sauce for glazing our whole chicken. I've just taken this out. It's been in the oven for about 25 minutes and uh, all I did was just um, completely covered it in Lapa Della Corto olive oil and then dusted it with salt and it's created this really cool kind of outer crunchy layer if you could see that. So now my sauce which was already blended I went ahead and only used one of the pieces of the Fresno chili removed all the ginger blended everything else in the Vitamix and then added about two tablespoons of butter to this. Um, I haven't had to salt it too much I think I used maybe a half a teaspoon of salt and now because my chicken is very nicely salted I know I won't need anything else. So now I'm going to start glazing my chicken as the sauce continues to cook. And it's going to be a really interesting thing. It's going to be a really thin layer right now. And then as the sauce cooks, the level of viscosity in the sauce will also make for a really nice, thickly glazed chicken. So that is what we're doing. And yeah, I'm using this weird apparatus. I'm not entirely sure where we got this. Um, it's just appeared in the drawer uh, one day. I can't find my actual basting brush, so this is what we're going to go with. Look at this thing. Okay, so I'll see you guys soon. How are you feeling? <laughs> I got it at Sir Latable, bro. <laughs> so Sir Latable is apparently where this basting brush, which is actually a pastry basting brush or see, pastry brush is where it came from i've never actually used it or seen it before so i wasn't entirely sure but it seems to be doing a really nice job so i'm not mad at it but i would like to find my actual brush it's probably in my tool kit but here we go first layer of the sauce on our beautiful chicken Okay guys, so this beautiful little sauce has just been blended and now I have added my lime and about two tablespoons of butter. And I'm bringing that up really nice and slow. I'm gonna let that reduce and then I'm gonna start glazing my chicken which is currently in a 450 degree oven ready to get glazed very shortly. So, mm, can't wait.